live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five9. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Enterprise Connect 2019. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host for the week, Stu Miniman, and we are in Five Nines booth here at this event. Excited to welcome to theCUBE for the first time, Jace Moreno, Microsoft Teams developer, platform lead from Microsoft. Jace, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. So we're excited that you're here because you are on the main stage tomorrow morning with Lori yeah. Wright. Um, but talk to us about Microsoft Teams. You've been, with Microsoft for a lot a while now, but about 10 months with Teams. Talk to us about this tool for collaboration that companies can use from 10 people in a meeting to 10,000? Yeah, you, you'll hear us tomorrow where uh, the phrase we're coining is an intelligent workplace for everyone, right? And I think for a long time we've been perceived as an organization who builds tools, a lot of times for the enterprise knowledge worker. The whole goal is to dispel that. You know, there's multiple people out there, millions of people who are you know, frontline workers, whatever you want to call them, but the folks that are interfacing with your actual customers. And so we need to make sure that we are developing tools that are for them. But overall, as I look at the product and, and what we've delivered, it's about bringing you one single place to go to for collaboration, right? So, and that is bringing together your tools, whether or not Microsoft built them into one experience, and then processes and workflows around them. Yeah. So do you find that in terms of traction, that the, like the enterprises and maybe the uh, more senior generations that have been working with Microsoft tools for a long time get it? Or, I mean, because I can imagine there's kind of a cultural gap there with large, whether it's a large enterprise like a Microsoft or maybe a smaller organization, there are people in this modern workforce that have very different perspectives, different cultures, how can teams help to maybe break down some of those barriers and really be a platform for innovation? No, it's a great question. I mean, I think we've been battling that cultural digital clash for a long time, you know, to, to be fair. I think it really comes out with teams though, because it is an entirely different way of working. It's not just chat anymore, right? It's collaboration, it's bringing together all of these experiences. And so I think, you know, there's, a maturity curve for some of our average users, to be fair. Um, we're already seeing that curve take off as we speak. But what I often give advice to customers and to partners, um, I call them superpowers, but you got to find that one reason that really gets people over the line. Because we get asked all the time, hey, everybody loves it, but we want to get them to use this as the one tool, the one place that I go, so I know that everything I send in our organization goes to that single place. How do I deliver that? And I go, just give them a reason. Right? I mean, that's what it comes down to, honestly, and I genuinely see that with organizations. We're seeing incredible examples of organizations leveraging partner integrations where it's bringing out their culture rather than them trying to evolve it, if that makes sense. Right. Um, yeah, so, please. So, Jason, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the partners there, and when I hear developer platform, yep. all right, bring us inside a little bit. For sure. Everything API compatible, uh, you know, when people think about developers, you know, there have been developers in the Microsoft space, you know, .NET's got its great ecosystem there, but what is it like to be, you know, in the Microsoft ecosystem here in 2019? It's a, it's a fun place to be. It's, um, I will say, you know, I've actually, I've even stopped using the term developer when I say platform, though, to be fair, because, and the reason I bring this up, what we've actually built allows a lot of IT professionals to build as well in Teams. Um, you know, PowerShell scripts, as an example, is a huge uh, opportunity for our customers. Frankly, I've never written a line of code in my life and I built a bot for Teams. So it's pretty amazing what we're enabling. But when we look at a lot of what partners are building, it's where are they seeing opportunities in the marketplace? So Five9 as an example with customer care, great opportunity there, where we can extend the capabilities that a contact center, as an example, might need inside of Teams if they want to deploy that. Yeah, I, I love, I actually got to interview Jeffrey Snover at Microsoft Ignite last year, who of course created PowerShell, yep. uh, and he was like more excited you know, now <laughs> than he was when it was created you know, quite a long time ago. Um, so, uh, you know, when I look around this platform, you know, tell some of the some of the partners that you're working with. You sure. know, I, I saw some of the some of the early notes, things like you know, uh, Zoom uh, and uh, um, oh gosh, what, you know, did, yeah, talk, talk about sure. some of the partners you're working yeah, with. Yeah. So one thing I'll touch on too that I, I don't know if I fully answered your last question is what I'm hearing from our partners who have built on Teams, and I'll, and I'll touch on which ones in a second. You know, we call it the extensibility of our platform, but quite literally, what it means is they are we are allowing partners to allow their solutions to render in different ways inside of Teams. And what we're hearing from partners, I had a conversation with Disco the other day as an example. So they built a, uh, I'm not doing them a service by explaining it like this, but it's a kudos bot essentially that they delivered. And it's, it's, it's actually bringing out that culture. But they told us the beauty of the Teams platform is that 
they don't only show up as a bot to the end users, they actually, we've offered them other ways to interact with the end user. So whatever's more comfortable for me inside of Teams and my interaction with that solution, it's easy for them to have that, that, uh, that correspondence. And so, um, you know, but in terms of top partnerships that we're looking at, we've had some incredible integrations built recently. Um, ADP just launched theirs pretty recently to check payroll and build sort of a um, time off process flow, if you will, with a bot. Holly's been a great one from day one. Um, we you know, have integrations with partners like Atlassian for our DevOps tools, so Jira and Confluence Cloud, Trello for project management. Uh, I could go on forever, but we have over 250 in the store right now, and that is growing very rapidly. This is what we spend most of our time on. So um, the initial focus was, what are the tools out there that most people need to get their job done every day? So that's where we'll start, and now we're really evolving that, um, and we're seeing some incredible things being built as we speak. Yeah. So Jace, being at Enterprise Connect, you know, this is an event where it's been around for a long time and has evolved quite considerably as enterprise communication and collaborations has. But one of the things that when I was doing research to prep for the show that I'm reading is that you know, the customer experience is table stakes, it's, it's make or break, but some of the recommendations that when a company is, you know, whether it's within a business unit buying software and, and services or at the corporate level, the customer has to have a seat there so that the decision is being made, are we implementing tools and technologies and services that are actually going to delight our customers, not just retain them, but drive customer lifetime value. In your role, where are some of Microsoft's customers in terms of helping to evolve the evolution of the platform? That's a great question, I'm really glad you asked it. It's, it's been fun in my role because what we're seeing is a lot of customers who have taken the platform and built integrations to their tools. So think outside of productivity for a second, think IT support, think employee resources. They're building those integrations and they're leveraging those as a way to drive that organic, broad adoption inside of their companies. Because they don't want to do the IT force anymore. They want people to love it, like you said, and naturally take to it. And so I keep coming back to that. I call it superpowers. Again, might be a ridiculous term, but it's those superpowers you deliver to your people that allow them to get their work done better get them to love that product, and to your point, not want to ever leave it, because you can get a majority of your work done every day in that place. So, we've seen some really cool ones. A couple examples um, that we just shared recently. So, uh, Dentsu is a great one. So they have a three-person change management team for a 50,000-person global organization. Okay, three people. Got to scale there, right? <laughs> Can't do that one-on-one -on -one training. And so they initially took teams and integrated it into their current website, internet, internal portals to essentially create a chatbot that helps people learn how to use the technology they delivered. Now they're taking that one step further because they saw such great success and they're going to different centers of excellence inside the organization saying, hey, do you want to get on board? Because we'd like to make this the bot that you interact with as an employee of Dentsu. So it's just incredible, but it's driving again that adoption. They're seeing leveraging some of the simple stuff that we have on the platform. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah. very well, thank yeah. you. Um, so it, when I look at some of the macro trends about communication, where I've heard some great success stories is internally, just being able to collaborate with some of my internal people, Teams has done really well. Collaborating between various organizations still seems to have more challenges. Can you just bring us a little bit insight as to you know, why you know, I, I hear great success stories there, and not, not negatives on Teams, but just, you know, it's still challenging. If I have yeah. multiple organizations, we all understand, even just doing a conference call, or you know, heck, a video call between lots of different companies, it's still in 2019 is a challenge. Yeah, look, I mean, I'll give you a couple answers here. We're, we are young, I mean, it's two years old as a product, so the, the momentum's been incredible, but you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we don't have things to work on. We absolutely do. What I will say though, um, you know, take Enterprise Connect for example. We actually have a Teams team for Enterprise Connect. There's, I actually checked this morning, there's 181 people in that team. A majority of them are guests, so external users. So vendors that we work with to help us plan this conference and bring it all together. And a lot of that has been seamless. Yes, there are little things here and there that we're working on, but um, in that respect, it's been pretty incredible. I, constantly am using it with external parties. Um, and I, I, I find though, I, I don't necessarily know if the challenge is in the interface itself. I think it ends up becoming this opportunity to really educate people on this new way of working. And so, you know, going back to our partners, again, we're sitting here with 5.9, but that becomes critical. It's how do we work better with these organizations who we have mutual customers with to create that experience together, right? And bring, again, superpowers to the users. Uh, 
What about security as a superpower? Where is that in these conversations? I mean, everything we build has a layer of security. I actually just got out of a meeting. Um, you'll see we've got, a, we've got an announcement around this tomorrow. Um, so I, I can't blow it, unfortunately. But uh, bottom of our, our, the foundation and core of everything that we do will be security focused, absolutely. All right, so uh, I went to the Microsoft show last year. AI is also one of those things besides security. Uh, AI is infused anywhere, so uh, where, where does AI fit into the sure. whole team story? Look, the way we see it, I look at this in a couple angles. So, you know, most people get onto teams and it's kind of chat and collab at first, right? Not always the case, but a lot of organizations do that. Then it goes to meetings, and I think, and you'll see a lot of this cool stuff tomorrow, we're doing it on AI, but it's how then do you proactively start delivering better experiences to your end users. So I think of things that we're looking at right now is taking data and sending those as an example to your IT admins, about giving them insight into how users are leveraging teams, how do you improve that experience for them. So again, you drive that natural broad adoption, but kind of assist them a little bit along the way. Um, so tons of great examples around the board. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure that fully answers your question, but the, just the, the sky's the limit. I, I think of some other things we're looking at though, You'll see a lot coming in the form of transcription, translation, those services that really create inclusiveness, which is a big focus for us. You know, again, back to that point earlier, is the intelligent workplace for everyone. We want to be able to provide services with our partnerships that can really reach anybody in the business world, right? And even in the consumer world in some sense. Well, Jace, thanks so much for joining Stu and me on the program this afternoon. We're looking forward to hearing your keynote in the morning and sharing with us some of the excitement and things that are happening and announcements we're going to hear from Microsoft Teams tomorrow. That was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Day One Enterprise Connect 2019 from Orlando. Stick around. Stu and I will be right back with our next guest.